Hello and welcome back to Darts News Weekly, once again, second week, once again, joined by Samuel Gill. Sam, how are we doing, mate? Yeah, doing well, mate. Uh, looking, forward to, looking forward to talking darts again, despite it being quite a quiet weekend, um, by all accounts. Yeah. Quiet is not the word. Quiet is not the word. No challenge tour, no development tour, no PDC action. But we did have the CDC World Cup World Championship qualifiers over in Indiana, I believe it was. Uh, and we've got a few names qualified for the world, qualified for the World Cup. Uh, and I've got to say, American darts is looking, looking fairly strong at the moment. Yeah, um, like 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 I said before, we went on air. Despite the despite the entry list not exactly being um, full, uh, shall we say? Uh, you can you can you can say coronavirus kind of paid heed to that. Uh, we, could, we 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 definitely had a great field. A uh, few names aside, like so, Len, 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 Len Gates um, wasn't playing, but uh, yeah, barring that, we had a good winner in Danny Baggish in the end uh, from the CDC series. Yeah, we'll start with Baggish, actually. Um, we saw him at the Worlds last year. He looked good. Got to the second round. Um, defeated by Nathan Aspinall. I believe he took a set off. Aspinall mm. was the first one. Um, looks a good player. He's won the North American Championship. I'm sure this year he'll be looking to kick on, maybe, maybe reach a little bit further in the Worlds. I think the, I think the main thing with Baggish was that he was meant to... He was meant to actually play Q school at the start of the year, but he didn't, and uh, so he could have he could have been a fully fledged PDC tour card holder right now. Um, so for him to make that decision, in reality, uh, as much as there was potential reason behind it, um, it was a bit of a bad one, really, uh, but also a good one in a way because as we've seen the, with the likes of Damon Hetter, uh, as much as he's won a title, his first year on the PDC tour has been massively halted. It would have been the same with Danny Baggish, and um, he's definitely the he's definitely the class above, of course. Still have the likes of Darren Young uh, playing uh, week in, week out on that tour, um, which I'm quite surprised he hasn't qualified for the world. But uh, based basing it on the series that was that was played in the end over the weekend, uh, Bag Bagish was the overall winner by by a mile. Yeah, you mentioned um, Q School there and Bagish. We don't know what's going on with Q School this year. We don't know if players are going to be able to travel over. You'd imagine if if Bagish was to travel over, the centre board option would be go to. European Q school, he'd have much more of a chance there. Do we think if he travels over, he's got a chance? Oh yeah, definitely. He's he's, he's definitely got the game uh, against Aspinall. He kind of, I think, I think I remember it quite well in, in terms of he uh, he started off really well and he was he was really pumped up with the celebrations, as we know, with your your favourite walk on, uh, Josh, uh, as well. But uh, yeah, he's the, he was—he was—he was definitely the class above. And compared to compared to other players who have kind of taken that spot in previous years, he showed—he showed he definitely has something about him. He was—he was throwing mid nineties to hundred averages, uh, both on the tour and and even and even on the even on the big stage at Alexandra Palace. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do again when uh, at the end of the year, whether whether with fans or not. Yeah, completely agree. And um, then the other two players we've got, Denny Lalby. Um, he came through earlier in the year. We've seen him on the, the North American circuit fairly regularly. Very fast player. We'll have to see how he gets on uh, at the World Championship. Then Matt Campbell saw him the, uh, last year as well. Uh, lost out to Mark McGinney, put in a, a fairly decent performance from what I remember. Um, two good players that have got a little bit of pedigree behind them. You know, Danny Lalby's uh, old man, he, he competed in the PDC uh, on the tour, the World Match Play, the World Championship. We've seen him, well, Many many years ago, and a, a debut at the Palace. Hopefully, the Palace for uh, for Daniel Alba Junior. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in terms of at the start of the year, like you say, with Q score, he was he was very unlucky not to get a tour card. Uh, he was up on the order of merits and was playing really well. But uh, as as we know, for the past few, for the last few days, at least just didn't didn't click for him, and he didn't end up getting a tour card. Um, so he definitely can play on the floor. Uh, that that might, is is def definitely the case, but. Uh, can he can he can he take up to the to the big stage in the limited amount of time we've seen him? Of course, we've only really seen him in there such events as the US Darts Masters, where he's against big players automatically. Um, and so, when when if he can get a good draw at the Alexandra Palace, uh, I, I think he, he could be he could be a big danger in the first round that that people might not talk about. Yeah, and then we've course, of course got the the World Cup of Darts as well. Um, Matt Campbell, who I mentioned, he joins. Jeff Smith, obviously a fully fledged tour card holder now, um, sort of the World Series a few weeks ago. He looks fairly, fairly good in his in his recent form. 
And then for the American side, Darren Young, um, he's been there plenty of times before. He's big stage experience. He knows what he's doing. And uh, Chuck Polio, seen him at the World Championship two years ago. Lost 3-0 to Dimitri. Um, we've seen him on the World Cup stage, I believe, last year as well. Yes, we did indeed, yeah. Uh, for me, I think the, I think the Canada, Canada duo uh, stands out massively um, in terms of a team who could do, could do bits, as you say. Um, for me, Matt Campbell, of course, hasn't shown his, hasn't shown his best game as of yet because it's kind of, in a way, youth and, youth and experience uh, in that team. You've got Jess Smith, who's been there, done it all. Uh, and Matt Campbell, who's only really played once on the big stage. Uh, by, by, the, by, the, by the looks of things of the CDC, um, he's, been, he's, been, he's been the class above a lot of the time. And again, like with Danny Welby, if he can take that four months on the big stage, he's... Um, I, def I definitely, I definitely say the Canada team are in for in, in with a shout. In terms of the US team, um, it's a shame really that we didn't get Baggish and Lauby, because in my opinion they would have as well been a massive danger. Um, Darren Young, with it, of course we know what we, we we know what he can do. Of course, Van Chris Brown and Van Barneveld, which is despite his uh, his long his long career, it's it's what he'll be known known for now. Despite Barney coming back and Puglio, again we haven't seen the best of him on the big stages of yet. Uh, like you say, he ended up losing to Dimitri at the Worlds. He played at the World Cup last year, um, and, hope, and hopefully, when 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 he takes that stage again next month, he'll be uh, he'll, he'll be he'll be ready for the task. Yeah, as you say, there's always a, a team at the World Cup of Darts. Austria have been there in the past with the likes of Zoran Lurchbacker and Sulevich. They've always been surprised. We've seen the the Spanish sides over the years, of course, look mm. look to cause some shock. And I've got to say, Jeff Smith. Um, a fantastic player on his day. Um, you, the problem is with Jeff, you don't know which, which player is going to turn up. Yeah. He's uh, on his day, absolutely fantastic, but he can also have a stinker. Um, and Matt Campbell, as you say, on, on the CDC tour, plenty of, of mid 90s, high 90s averages, and and consistently as well. You have to say so. Unfortunately, hasn't been able to do it on his his limited TV appearances. But if we do see him again there, then. Uh, who knows for Matt Campbell? I, I think I think as well you've got to say it's the experience because you because you end up seeing players like Leonard Gates, uh, for example, who can average hundreds. They can average 105 uh, in certain games, but then they end up going down to 70s, 80s in the following game, and it can only get you so far on the tour. And of course, it's it's all down to experience and having that having that CDC there. Um, I, I get. I, I think. I think. In, in days gone by, it's been uh, it's been almost the the American players haven't been it's been the same faces. Uh, a lot of them are really experienced, like Sir Larry Butler. Um, but I, I think I think now we've actually got this pathway a bit like with the Asia Tour that every single year when an American and Can Canadian player qualify, they, it, it, it 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 just heightens heightens the stakes almost at the Worlds. Um, and, and players like Baggish, you don't want to draw them uh, in the first round at the end of the day. And now into the World Grand Prix, 16 fantastic ties um, drawn for the first round. We're going to give you our predictions. Um, not sure if you want to be following along with them, but uh, you can do if you want to anyway. Uh, the first game up is Michael Van Gogh against Christoph Rutajski. I'm going to have a quick look at this one first. Um, Michael Van Gogh in over a short format. This is where he's going to be dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, we'll restart that. Uh, <laughs> Getting like me, bloody hell. <laughs> right. Now into the World Grand Prix draw. We're going to give you our predictions. Um, some fantastic ties out of the hat, it's got to be said. Probably some of the best ties we've seen in, in years at the World Grand Prix, despite it being behind closed doors in Coventry. We're going to give you our predictions, and I'm going to give you mine first for the first round game between Michael Van Gerwen and Christoph Rutajski. If Michael Van Gerwen's going to be in danger, it's going to be in the early rounds where it is a shorter format. Of course, just first of two sets, um, three legs per set in the first round. Um, and for me, the form that Christoph Rutajski's in, he'd be he'd be a little bit silly not to have a sniff at, at Christoph Rutajski because. He's playing some absolutely fantastic darts, and and Michael Van Gogh at the moment, you just don't know what he's gonna what he's gonna do, and especially with obviously the double start format, if he starts to lose his way on the doubles, you can see 
his confidence dropping, so I'm actually going to go uh, 2 1 Ratajski in this one. Yeah, I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree with that, to be honest. Uh, it's been it's been his massive Achilles heel as of late, Van Gerwen. and um, a lot of people have said he's been playing bad, but for me, he hasn't been playing that poorly. Uh, it's just been on his doubles that have been letting him down, and especially in this double start format. You can say all you want in terms of him um, him being a multiple-time champion in this event and going for three in a row this time out. But uh, it, it's, it's, it's definitely in favour of Ratajski, I'd definitely say. Um, and a lot of money will likely be going on him and if, you, if you're into betting, if you like a flutter. Um, especially with the next round being um, Jose de Souza against Devin Peterson, which, uh, which, which we'll cover next. We will indeed. Uh, and I'm going to go to you first on this one, Sam. Two players in great form. Um, who are we going for? I, I, I'm, I'm plumping with Devon for this one. Um, to be honest, he's the man in form. Uh, Jose, uh, he played really well during the Autumn Series. Um, and of course, in the match play, he was very unlucky not to win. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's two David turns, but two players who are two of the most in form in the PDC at the moment. Uh, a lot of people have been saying about Peterson, even as a potential winner. Uh, I know Mark Webster has over the past week uh, when he spoke about the tournament. Uh, and for me, I, I, it's like I said last week, in terms of double eight, double 16, is not really a better player at the moment, uh, I'd likely say, uh, especially in this format. Um, if he can get the 180s going after that, uh, he can streak ahead in legs, especially if he hits that double eight and double 16 first time out. I'm going 2-0 on this one for Devon. Uh, as good as Jose is, uh, we, we, we know for a fact with him, he's, he's got a tendency to, to hit weird doubles and hit weird finishes. Uh, if he can get it right, it will be 2-1 uh, either way, in my opinion. But for now, I'm going 2-0 to Devon, for, Devon for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. I was going to go 2-0 Devon as well. Um, purely on the last few weeks of form, he's absolutely brimming with confidence after his win on the European Tour, of course. And... I have to say one thing that is so important at the World Grand Prix is concentration. Um, yeah. And I think that is possibly one of the, the few things that Jose de Souza lacks. Um, yeah. At times he, he forgets which double he's going for. He, he goes for a, a big number when he, he should be going for a treble or something. Um, and... For me, Devon is just looking absolutely magnificent at the moment. I believe he's around a 50 to 1 outsider at the moment. To, um, I think, to I think it's gone down to about 33 to 1 now. And don't quote me on that. With, I think with Boyle Sports, he's, with, he's at 33 to 1 at the moment, which is, which is worth a pound of any money, really, I'd say. Just in case, even if he loses the first round. Like, for me, if he, if he wins that first round, especially if Van Gerwen loses out as well to Ratajski, um, he's got Ratajski the following round, then he's got a game that we'll go on to next in terms of James Wade and Mervyn King. He's got the winner of that, potentially. Um, so it could massively open up for him. Uh, it's a horrific half of the draw, though, for Devon. Yeah, and you've got to say, if, if Michael Van Gerwen does lose that first one, Ty Devon's price will tumble. Um, so we're going to the third game, James Wade, Mervyn King. Another close game, another game between two relatively informed players. Both looked... Um, fairly decent at the, the recent European Tour event. For me, this one is so tough to call. Um, but I am going to go with James Wade. 2-1. Um, it's, it's one you can't split them on experience. You can't particularly split them on form. But as we've seen so many times, James Wade finds a way to get the job done. Um, and I think he's probably just going to get over the line here. Mervyn King looked good in the European Tour, as we say, but <laughs> you've got to say the consistency, is it there for King? Yes, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. So I'm going to go 2-1 James Wade. Yeah, I, I agree on that one. Of course, he's a two-time champion at the World Grand Prix as well. He's, he's, uh, we're saying about Devin Peterson in double 16. I'd, I'd probably say alongside Gerwin Price, the best double 10 hitter in the world is James Wade, as we know, he's, he's, he's old faithful. Um, and, and for me, despite King taking the win the other week, it was under different circumstances. King had to had to basically win to qualify for the World Grand Prix as a whole, and he went on from there. And it was a bit like Clayton was a bit of a free bit of a free roll. So now he's actually qualified for the World Grand Prix. Will, will he actually continue that form that he showed against Van Gerwen and against Wade, or will he or will he lose in the first round? It's a very interesting tie. Yeah, but but like but like I say, two one. 
again with Wade, uh, if he can get through that, uh, like we said with Peterson and Van Gerwen, um, a lot of people aren't talking about Wade um, in terms of an outright winner. Uh, if he can get through that game against King, uh, we, 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 know, we know what he can do at the end of the day, James Wade. Like I said, two-time champion in this event. He knows how to win it. Despite being in Coventry, I think I think he's in with a good shot if he can get past King for, for sure. So, yeah, 2-1 two, two, for me as well. Yeah, well, well, we've agreed on the first three games. Um, yeah. I can't see us agreeing on this one, but no. uh, Chris, Chris Doby against Adrian Lewis. I'm going to let you go first, Sam. Uh, yeah. Another terrific time prospect. Uh, Chris Doby, all the way for me. Um, Adrian Lewis has been bang out of form for quite a while. Uh, he was he was he was seriously lucky to even qualify for this event. Um, he 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 has Devin Peterson to thank for actually qualifying because if not it would have been uh, it would have been the Black Cobra going in the Rico Arena stage. Uh, instead, he's playing home tour today. But uh, yeah, for me, Do- Doby Doby showed he was in some sort of form um, at the at the at the at the last European Tour event. Uh, it was the same with King, same with Clayton. He had to win games to uh, to qualify for the World Grand Prix and confirm his spot. Um, and for yeah, for me, it's a it's a two 0 win all over. A lot of people will will say, oh, uh, in terms of Lewis, that that he might pull it out of the bag because we know that we 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 definitely know with Jackpot that he's uh, he, he can he can produce on the big stage when he when he's given the opportunity. But but his, his pro tour form has left nothing to be desired. He he ended up losing at the losing at the German Darts Championship last week as well. Um, yeah, I I I definitely go with a two 0 win to Chris uh, Chris Doby. Interesting predictions there, Sam. Um, I've got to say, in, in terms of form over the last few months, Doby hasn't been magnificent. I know, obviously, Adrian Lewis hasn't either. Um, and I think it's very much a toss-up for who turns up on the day. I was looking at the odds last night, and Chris Doby is a, a fairly significant favourite. I believe he was on 8-13 to 13, um, on to win that, um, which I've got to say did surprise me. Um, yeah. Really. Listening to your reasoning um, may have <laughs> swayed my opinion very slightly. Um, <laughs> but I am going to go. I am going to end up going two-one to Chris Doby, but I believe yeah. it will be a scrap. I believe it probably will be a pretty poor game. Um, but mm. you know, Adrian Lewis does have fighting, and we saw him at the World Match Play. Yeah, he showed a lot of fight. Um, stage is very different to the Pro Tours, but um, it, it's a game that's extremely hard to call. Um, but I, I will join you in going with Dobie, but a 2-1 for Chris. I think, I think it's one of those games, like you say, both, both players are not in, not in remarkable form at all. Like you say, it could be, could be a big scrap. It could be, could be that Lewis or Dobie runs away with it. Um, and, it and, and for me, it's the one tie in the draw that... <sighs> It's it's very hard to call from that perspective. Like no no compared to other players in the draw who are banging form, these two answers. Yeah, uh, it could go either way, but for me it's for me it's Chris Doby all over. Or like with a lot of games, it could be two nil two nil to Adrian Lewis. In my opinion, it's got a two nil scoreline all over it. I won't I won't I won't massively say it's a scrap. It, like you say, it depends on who turns up on the day because uh, because Lewis, Lewis could come out of the traps and, and produce an absolute excellent display, or Doby could. Maybe could do vice versa. Who knows? We move on to the second quarter of the draw. It's Michael Smith against Dimitri Vandenberg. Um, an all-star tie, really. In obviously Smith, a, a top top player and a Premier League player, and then the the World Match Play champion. It's um, a draw that's probably gone uh, a game that's probably gone a little bit under the radar. We've seen obviously um, Glenn Durr and the Brook Cross game and. Um, they, they've been taking the headlines, really, but this is a superb game um, and one that I see Michael Smith winning. We know he doesn't like this tournament. Um, it doubles desert him uh, at the crucial times. He, he just doesn't like it. But once he's got that double in, it's, it's a normal game of darts at the end of the day. Um, and Michael Smith is one of the best players at darts. Um, Dimitri Vandenberg, fantastic at the match play. Um, that's all that can be said for that tournament, really. But in the months and the weeks that have followed, it hasn't really followed it up. Um, whether he's going to be able to to bring it back on the stage, we don't know. Obviously, he's got the the injury to, I believe, his knee, is it? Um, 
which is which has caused trouble over the past um, pro tours. But um, for me, I'm going to go Michael Smith, and I'm actually going to go two 0 to the bully boy. Again, this is a bit of a weird tie for me um, in terms of Dimitri. It's, it's, it's been well known that he, he, he actually needs surgery on that knee. Uh, it's a long-standing injury which has been flared up uh, due to a football football injury a few years ago. And uh, but at the end of the day, in terms of in terms of Smith, like you say, he, he doesn't like this tournament. Um, in in terms of last year, he reached the second round. The year before that, first round, first round, first round, three years in a row. Uh, he's, he's not. He's not actually. He's only reached the last sixteen twice. Um, and yes, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strange game. It's it's it's, my, it's Michael Smith's hate for the World Grand Prix versus Dimitri Vandenberg's injury for me. Um, Smith Smith at full pomp. If he can hit that, if he can hit the doubles, um, for me, yeah, two two nil, two nil to Smith. A lot of people have been actually plumping money on Dimitri Vandenberg to win the tournament after the World Grand Prix, uh, the World World Match Play. Uh, for, for me, for me, it's a bit of a wrong bet. Um, he, he has shown he can do it behind closed doors, which can play into his hands really, uh, especially if he's had this injury for a while, but it's just not had a brace on it. Um, he, he, he has kind of showed that he can play well with this brace, but a European tour and a pro tour is very different to at the big stage, and it's going to be quite intriguing for me to kind of see how 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 he gets on and how and if it's healed or not. Or, um, yeah, and so for me, yeah, two two nil to Michael Smith. But uh, as we know, with Dimitri injury or not, if he turns up, he can he he, he can win two nil. It's a bit like the last game. It's it's a bit of a weird one to call, but yeah, going two nil Michael Smith on that one. Yeah, and the winner of that game will face Mensa Sulevich or Dirk Van Um Let you go first here, Sam. Another another interesting time. Oh yeah, definitely. In terms of Dirk. Um, I, I, I personally am just looking forward to his walk on more than anything, especially with there being no crowd. Uh, of course, it's well known on the European tour, and uh, and and to, and to be fair, his run at the start of the year of the Belgian Darts Championship was phenomenal. Really, to, to take a take a phrase off Michael Van Gerwen, uh, it, it, it was it was absolutely phenomenal, and uh, yeah, end of getting him, end of getting into this to this point, his form at the moment a bit hit and miss. Um, in, in terms of his those autumn series and summer series, um, but he, he was he was well in uh, for quite some time in terms of his in terms of his position. He's a bit he's a bit of an enigma really in terms of the World Grand Prix because we haven't really seen a lot of him on the big stage. We haven't really seen him at the World Championships that often, um, and, he, and he and he's kind of in a line of players uh, who who have kind of risen this year, a bit like Jose and Devin Peterson, but. Uh, while, while 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 Devon has uh, has massively gone forward and, um, and and shown us all that he can that he can produce, he's kind of stagnated, Dirk. And and in terms of the coronavirus pandemic, he's kind of been a bit of a victim for that because he would have pushed on, in my opinion, and and, and produced some of those darts that he that he showed at the start of the year. But as it is, in terms of Mensor, he's he's been playing really well at the moment uh, for me. He, he was he was very unlucky to lose in the World Series of Darts Finals in front of his home crowd. He, he produced like the third, the third best average of that weekend and uh, and, and ended up the loser. And and he, he's kind of shown uh, part, parts of his game that um, he, he's he's definitely going towards that form that he that he ended up showing a few years ago when he ended up winning the Champions League. And it's kind of it's kind of his favourite time of the year for that really. And and as a result, experience over the debut to, uh, for me two 0 2 0 men, so he, he'll be kicking off on that double 14 as well, which he isn't as imperious on anymore as he used to be. He used to hit it for fun. He's, he, he's, he's not so, uh, he, he kind of misses it a lot more, but he'll be kicking off on that one. And if he can get that right, he's, he's, he's a match for anybody. Yeah, uh, I'm going to agree with you on the 2 0 scoreline. I believe actually over the past probably 18 months, Spencer hasn't been his old self, but over the last few months, um, probably since the, the return of darts as such, we're starting to see the old Mensa again. He's he slipped yeah. down the rankings, unfortunately, but I actually believe Mensa is probably in the, the same form where he won the Champions League, where he was getting to um, the finals of the World Match Play. Um, he's, looking, he's looking as good as he ever has, really, um, in plenty of 180s, which is maybe not 
what people expect from Memphis Sidovic, but, but you've got to say he is. In terms of Dirk van Dijvenbode, um, as you say, a real victim of, of coronavirus, started the year absolutely on fire, and it looked like he was going to be one of the big names to sort of emerge from 2020, like Peterson, like D'Souza. Um, but unfortunately, hasn't had the action. We haven't seen him seen him properly since probably the UK Open when he had a little bit of a run there. Um, so we don't particularly know what, what stage form he's going in with. Hasn't been overly impressive in the, the autumn series, summer series events. Um, so for me, yeah, 2-0 Sulevich. He looks red hot. Uh, and in that, that quarter of the draw, just looking at it now, he could be a real threat there. He could be a real threat to make the semi-final. So I'm going 2-0 Mensur Sudovic. The next game on my list is one of the more intriguing ones. Rob Cross, recent World Series finalist against Gary Anderson, who we haven't seen for a few months. Sam? Um, yeah, it's a bit like the last game, really, but in, in an opposite way. Yeah, of course, with Dirk, like you say, we haven't seen him for a few months. Uh, Gary's Gary's exactly the same, but it's a bit different because, of course, Gary, Gary's a Gary's a massive name. And he can turn it on when when he wants. Uh, for for me, it's even more intriguing because before, I, I I'd say I'd say seeing the lineup before the World Grand Prix, Rob Rob for me would have stood stood out as a player who who would go out in the first round. Uh, if we go back as far as the World World Match play in the Premier League, but he's kind of. He's kind of shown that fight and bottle um, over the past few months that he can he can produce that form of old and he's one of those players that's very interesting for me because he he, ne he never really produces his A game but as we've seen with both the European Championships and the World Match Play last year he can go on runs with with his B game which is it, it's dangerous to everybody else and especially if you can catch Gary Anderson out cold. Um, with, with, with not having the game time, Rob, Rob has had that game time over the past few months. I think, I think for me, I, I, I definitely plug towards to, towards voltage for this game. Um, two one, it will be a scrap in my opinion. It will likely be that uh, Cross comes out the better of the two wins the first set. Uh, we 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 might then have a have a fight back from Anderson, but it might end up two 0 to Cross. Um, it, 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 like I say, it depends how it depends how well uh, Anderson is practicing at the moment. If he's practicing. Which is always the big question with Gary. Uh, so yeah, for me, two two on to cross. It's one of the it's one of the standout ties of the uh, first round, and and the, and it's one I'm really looking forward to because it could seriously go either way. Yeah, I mean, we've agreed on far too much. I was hoping we'd at least uh, disagree on a few of these ties, but unfortunately not. Uh, I'm going to go two one to Rob Cross as well, purely on form and practice. Um, he's looked good and he's looked comfortable up on the stage. Um, he's using a little bit of a new setup as well, which which has obviously helped his confidence. Gary Anderson, as you say, we don't know how much he's practiced. Um, going into the the Premier League and the and the match play, he was able to sort of play himself into form. Obviously, with the the summer series being played um, around there as well. With this, he hasn't competed in the autumn series. He hasn't competed in the World Series. It's probably been. Well, getting towards probably a month and a half and since he's played proper professional darts and uh, to come back playing a play that's that's come into form recently that is Rob Cross and obviously with it being double star as well if, if Anderson starts missing this unfortunately for, for Gary could be an extremely tough first round tie so I'm going to join you there and say 2-1 Rob Cross uh, and another big danger in that half of the draw the final game of the top half, Danny Noffert, um, one of the form players in the world against Ryan Searle. Haven't seen him much on the tour, but is he going to cause any trouble? Personally, I don't think so. I think Danny Noffert's been too good in recent weeks. Um, I think he's a player that's gone completely under the radar. Um, it's likely now, or it's confirmed, I'm not sure which, that he's going to be joining Michael Van Gerwen at the World Cup of Darts. Um, Certainly, if he has a bit of run here, it, it's confirmed. Um, and he, he looks fantastic. He was, he was incredible at the doubles um, it, not so long ago on the TV. And if he can do that again, I don't give Ryan Searle much chance. Um, haven't seen Searle on the TV for, for quite some time now, um, unfortunately for me. And, uh, <laughs> and um, for me, Danny Noppert, 
2 0, easy one for me. Yeah, I agree massively on that. He's one of the most, he's he's one of the form players in World Darts at the moment. Uh, without 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 getting the plaudits, he has been for quite a long time um, alongside a group like uh, Clemens. Uh, despite him him being out of form at the moment, which we'll uh, which we'll touch on later, um, he, he 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 has been one of the one of the one of the best players in darts at the moment, and and has shown out on the Pro Tour. Uh, he's got to a TV final, of course. Uh, he, he also has the added caveat as well in terms of uh, Jermaine Watamina and the World, World Cup of Darts, like you say. Uh, Jermaine, Jermaine needs at least a quarterfinal um, to make it to the World, World Cup of Darts. He's, he's massively ahead. A first-round win would, like, would I, I'd say, potentially do it for Danny. And he, and he has that on the horizon. Um, and, yeah, I, I think he can cause massive trouble. Uh, if he gets through, of course, Cross or Anderson. Next up, and and I and I and I massively fancy him to end up defeating the defeating the winner of that game, and then from from there, he's got uh, Smith Van Vandenberg, Solubich, or Van Dijvenberg, and and yeah, I'm, I'm massively fancy him to go on a run in this tournament. Uh, he's he's uh, we end up going on earlier about outsiders for me. He's, he's he's one of the biggest one of the biggest outsiders going, uh, who could who could seriously win the title. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to I'm going to nil. Like you say, we haven't really seen a lot of Ryan So as of late. Uh, he's one of those players, a bit like a bit like in the next game we're going to touch on with Ryan Joyce. Um, he hasn't really backed up his players' championship win for me. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see uh, how how he gets on in terms of doubles, especially with him as well with his sight. I'd say his sight might be a tiny issue uh, with with him sometimes not being able to see the doubles. Uh, but again, it, it's it, it's a tournament which could spring surprises. We could we could be speaking in a week and saying, "Damn, uh, Ryan Sell produced one of the best performances around." We just don't know. But yeah, at the moment, I'm definitely going Danny Dopp in a two 0 win to to begin his campaign. And now into the second half of the draw on the kickoff with the reigning world champion Peter Wright. He faces Ryan Joyce, made his well match play debut not so long ago. A player that's caused trouble on the P on the PDC uh, TV stage before, but Peter Wright, one of the form players in the world, um, up there with going price for me in terms of his consistent performances. For me, there's not too much you can really say about this one. Um, Peter Wright is a is a better player than Ryan Joyce, and um, for me, it's it's two 0 yeah, I, I I massively agree with that. In terms of Joyce, it's like I just it's like I just said to you off air. He's a bit like Sell for me, and it's been a shorter amount of time, but he's not really he's not really delivered. And and he and he admitted himself last week in an interview that um, he's he's suffering with confidence going into the World Grand Prix, which can which can only be a bad thing for him against Peter Wright. He he he, you know, he absolutely thrives off players having 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 loads of confidence, a bit like Van Gogh and Price. Um, for me, he's got two 0 all over it. Um, you, you're not, you're not really as harsh as it sounds. You're not really looking at. A, he, he's easier bet over the course of the first round for me uh, than, than, than right to win two 0 um, I, I definitely say that in terms of his next his next round opponent, though, it could get a, a lot tougher for him. If you look at uh, Dave Chisnell or Glenn Durham, both players in four, uh, so he could go from having a two 0 to being embroiled in a dogfight, but. Um, we'll, we'll end up speaking about that uh, that game shortly. But yeah, 2-0. Two 2-0 nil. Two nil for me all over with Peter Wright, definitely. Well, you say shortly, you're actually going to speak about it now. Um, yeah. And I'm going, to, I'm, going to take, I'm going to take the reins with this one um, and stick my neck out and say Dave Chisnell wins. Um, a few reasons, really. Glenn Duran, of course, incredible in the Premier League. Of course, top that. Um, I love the Premier League playoffs in, uh, in not so long. But... Since the Premier League, he hasn't achieved what I'm sure he would have set out to achieve. Whereas Dave Chisnell in the last few weeks has looked a lot more like his old self. Um, of course, he's, he's not been consistent, but that, that is, that's come to what we expect from Dave Chisnell, to be honest. Um, he reached the final last year, lost out to Michael Van Gogh, and of course, in, in the City West Hotel. Um, I know Darren is incredible on the doubles. Um, I know he is, but if Chisnell can find the scoring form that we've seen in the last few weeks, I'm going Chisnell 2-1. Do we disagree, Sam? 
Yes, I disagree massively with that one. And so, in terms of Durham, uh, he ended up reaching the semi-finals last year. Of course, um, he's he's for me one. He's for me one of the best players on the doubles on the PDC tour. Uh, as as we as we evoke the phrase clutch in the in the press room at the World Championships, um, he's, he's he's just incredible at taking out the taking out these big finishes. Whether or not he can do when he starts the leg is another matter. You know, at the end of the day, it's different to start in the leg. Um, it's, 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 it's an absolute sucker, sucker blow of a, of a tie to begin, uh, especially when, like you say, you've got Peter Wright, Ryan Joyce above that. Uh, Wright, Wright has got, a, in a way, a, an easier e- easier draw. Not that, en- not that any tie is easier than World Grand Prix, but then you've got the semi-finalist, I assume it's the finalist. Uh, and it's like you say with Chisnell, his, his scoring in recent weeks has been really good. But I always heart back to that game um, only a few weeks ago against against Cody Harris when he averaged 75. Um, it's fair enough doing it in one event, but can he do it? Can he do it on the on the big stage in Coventry? It's uh, it, it's it, it's one. It's definitely one to watch in in the first round. For me, I'm going I'm going Glenn Durham. Uh, I'm even going to stick my neck out on my and say two 0 Durham in this game. Uh, for me, he's got the class. He's got the quality. Um, and, and, on, and on the doubles, he's got the clutch finishing as well. So even if he starts poorly in a leg, he can take out those those one one fifty shots, even lower than that, and, and make it look easy. And and for me, I'm looking forward to a tie Peter Wright against Glenn Durant in the second round. That 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 will be brilliant. Yeah, that will be some second round tie. Um, in the next sort of section of the draw, um, we'll be looking to face one of these two men in the. In the quarterfinals, Daryl Gurney against Joe Cullen, possibly one of the hardest ties to call in the whole first round. Um, and for that reason, I'm going to you first, Tom. Yeah, uh, in terms of Gurney Cullen, um, both, both players both players have shown all right form uh, as a play, which, which for me, look, looking at their form lines at the start of the year, I wouldn't have really expected it. Uh, Cullen, of course, in the autumn series in particular, showed showed how showed how well he how well he can play on the floor. Uh, Gurney, Gurney similar. He's been playing really well at the moment. Uh, definitely one of those ties that is like you say. It's, it's a bit, of, it's a bit of what you call a pick 'em. Um, 50-50 between them. Both players have shown formers of late, but they've also shown patches where they haven't really played well. Uh, like I said, with the Chisnell game, you're looking at with Cullen the Van der Voort game when he got whitewashed in Salzburg. Uh, of course, uh, set play, double, double, double styles, a different format, but. Yeah, um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna plump with uh, with Gurney two two uh, two one on this one. Uh, of course, he's won the tournament in the past, which for me stands him in good stead because especially on that double sixteen, he's up there for me with with one of the best one of the best double sixteen hitters in the world. Um, it's like with any tie though uh, in this in this tournament, it's the lack of crowd as well with Gurney. Um, in terms of when he comes on to Sweet Caroline, he gets pumped up. And the bar in the Premier League and the world match play, he hasn't really um, played in front of a crowd bar in Salzburg um, as of late. And it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Because uh, as we know in this tournament, he, he is, he's absolute quality when he, when he can get going and he can hit that double 16 to start the leg. Um, but can, but can, he, can he reproduce on that stage? It's, it's very good for me to see Joe Cullen in form as well. Uh, he might be spurred on by by his best mate Devin Peterson uh, to produce a good performance at the World Grand Prix and continue his good form. And um, both ties, both ties in this section for me are really hard to call. So I'll be, I'll hand back to you, Josh. Yeah, you've got to say having a having a friend there may be may well be a a little bit of a factor for Joe Cullen. Obviously, being comfortable on stage and being comfortable in the hotel where they're staying is a is a factor for many of the players. Another thing I will say is Cullen is is relatively comfortable on both double top and double sixteen, so he's got the option to to switch around if he if he needs to. Um, with it being short format, he'll need to make that decision pretty quickly. But um, he does have the option. Um, Daryl Gurney, should say former winner, um, very comfortable on double sixteen, starting to find his feet a little bit after a, a tough Premier League campaign. Um, for the only reason that he is a former winner of this tournament, in terms of form, I can't really split them at all. It's very much 50-50. I will go Daryl Gurney 2-1. Um, but uh, 
a tie that I'm, I'm not particularly comfortable predicting because it really could go could go anyway. Looking at the next tie, the one you you mentioned very briefly, um, Johnny Clayton against Ian White. Um, in terms of form, there's only one winner, uh, and that that is the ferret, um, and that will be. I'll reveal nice and early. It's the man I'm going to go for. Um, I'll give you the scoreline just yet, but. Johnny Clayton, absolutely magnificent at the, the European Tour event. Um, if he'd have faced anybody else in the final, then, then he would have probably been a, a European Tour winner uh, in 2020. But Ian White, obviously he wasn't held by the crowds over in Germany. Um, we, we've talked about his stage game so many times, so I'm not going to go into that again. Um, but in terms of form... If you compare him with Clayton, uh, Clayton is a, is above on those stakes. So I'm going to go two one to Johnny Clayton. I'm I'm going to go the opposite. Uh, I'm I'm going to stick my neck out again with this one. Um, for me, like, like it's like many say I've said before with Ian White, um, he's going to click eventually uh, for me on the big stage. He's, sometimes he's been unlucky and sometimes he's he's thrown the game away. Um, and, and, and like and like you say, in terms of the crowds last week, he's always been he's always been one of the best players on the pro tour uh, every year for the past for the past five ten years even. Um, and can can he do it in front of in, in front of behind closed doors? Because he's only really had uh, the world match play, which he lost in um, to kind of to kind of prepare for this tournament on the big stage. And while and while Clayton did perform well in front of a crowd. It's the same sort of thing with Mervin, uh, Mervin King and uh, Chris Doby as well. It is form, but it was form at the right time to qualify for a tournament. Um, so for me, it'll be interesting to see whether to, 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 to see see whether Johnny Clayton can reproduce uh, on on the big stage. Uh, for me, I'm going Ian White two one. Um, his form hasn't been great uh, as of late. Uh, he'll want to turn that round. He's had a bit of time to kind of reflect after. After last week, when he when he wasn't a big fan of the German crowd, uh, when, but he's, he's not playing Max Hopp or even Gabriel Clemens, and he's not he's not playing in front of a crowd uh, this, this next week. Um, it's, it's one which could go either way for me. Uh, two one to two one to Ian White because because uh, you went two one to Clayton for me, but uh, yeah, uh, it's definitely one which could go either way. Very kind of you there, Sam. Um, we move on to. Probably the uh, well, in my opinion, the, the best player in the world at the moment, Gerwin Price, um, and he faces Jermaine Watamina. You say he needs a, an extensive run, probably to the final, or even win the tournament to to pair up once again with Michael Van Gerwen at the World Cup. And unfortunately, I don't see him getting past the first round. Um, Gerwin Price on tops has been incredible over the last six months. Um, as I say, for me, the, the best player in the world at the moment. And we've seen so much from Gerwin Price to suggest that there's another big major tournament just around the corner. And I think the World Grand Prix is, is where it's going to come alive for Gerwin. And uh, I've got him down as a 2-0 a and a very comprehensive winner here. Well, of course, he's, he's very much brilliant at the Grand Slam this time of year as well. Um, and so he's been starting to find his form again to become that best player in the world. Um, it's like with anything with this tournament, it could produce shocks. His best is a quarter final in 2018, but it's a different go in price to back. Uh, he's been he's been he's been in my opinion best player in the world for for, for the best part of a year. Uh, he was very unlucky at the UK Open not to add that to his collection. Of course, he was massively ahead of Van Gogh and then he ended up um, ended up falling apart for him. But having that World Series finals to kind of get over that hurdle, as much as it isn't, every, every tournament's a major, as we know, but um, to kind of get over that hurdle of losing earlier on in the year in the UK Open, um, I think he could just go from strength to strength uh, in this tournament. Compared to Van Gogh, uh, he's, he's got... He's got, in my opinion, best quarter of any of any big name. Um, Jermaine Motamina, of course, uh, in the first round. Uh, in terms of the next the next round following that, he played the winner of the next game, which is Brendan Dolan or Kim Hybrex. Uh, for, me, for me, I'd love to see Price Hybrex as well. Um, before we end up speaking about that game, um, 
because both players would be really fired up, crowd or not. But for me, yeah, um, pre- pressure will be on Jermaine, like we say, to get into that World Cup squad. And espe- yeah, especially if Danny Knopper wins as well. I, I, he's, not been, he's not been in the best form, uh, as he kind of showed in the, um, in the Premier League, where I believe he actually he ended up losing two Gowen Price yeah. um, on, on, on his night and got, got whitewashed. Um, yeah, so for me, there's only one winner. Uh, 2-0 to Price for me. Yeah, we, uh, we don't differ on that one, but I expect to see a differing on the next one. Brendan Dolan, Kim Hybrex. Haven't seen Kim on TV for quite a while now. Brendan Dolan's been a, a mainstay of the, the World Grand Prix and a mainstay of the, the form tables leading up to this event. Um, it's, a, it's another very, very tough one to call. Um, do you go on a player that's that's very much snuck into the World Grand Prix in Kim Hybrex, or do you go with a player that's probably confirmed his place six months ago with um, with his performances on the Pro Tour? Um, for me, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Kim Hybrex, and I'm gonna go two one, um, purely because it's. A, I think it's a little bit of a free shot for Kim. Um, a few weeks ago, he maybe wasn't expecting to be in this position he, and uh, a couple of runs put him in a, a healthy position now um, and in a, in a draw of, of Brendan Dolan, not that, that Brendan Dolan's a pushover at all, he could have got a much tougher draw, um, Kim Hybrex. So I think he's going to see this as a little bit of a free shot to, to get some form back on TV um, and I'm going with Hurricane 2-1. I'm going to disagree uh, on this one. Um, I've, um, I've, I've always been an advocate of Brendan Dolan. I've always, I've always liked to throw. Of course, uh, he ended up being that history making nine data as much as it, as much as it was years ago. Now um, he's been, it's been interesting with Dolan because he's been again, again, really consistent on, and, and I know, and I know you can't really go off pro tour form um, over the past year or so. It kind of He's, he's kind of returned to the foray um, in terms of the in terms of PDC rankings. It's another game though where it's hard to pick a winner. Um, it could go either way for me. It's like you say with with Kim, uh, he's got he's got form as of late. He's, he's been playing pretty well. Uh, whether, whether or not it's because he it's because he's moved to a new darts manufacturer. Like it, it's the same thing with Devon. Um, as much as he's changed aspects of his throw. It'll be interesting to see how see how Hybrex gets on on his return to the big stage. Um, it'll be two on for me either way, but I, I'm going I'm going Brandon Dolan uh, in this in, in in this in this double in format. I think he's got the edge for me uh, as much as as much like I say it was, it was nine nine years ago. Now they ended up in that nine data ten ten nearly ten even. Um, so it doesn't get any easier though for either player, like we say, go in price potentially in the next round. So I way you look at it. Um, for, for me, for me, the winner as much will be out of the tournament in the second round anyway, as harsh as that sounds. Yeah, we've got two more games to go through quickly now. Uh, Nathan Aspinall against Gabriel Clemens. Um, Clemens, we discussed him last week, hasn't been in the, the best of form in 2020, saw the best of him in 2019, of course. Um, Nathan Aspinall, completely opposite really, um, has looked fantastic this year. We mentioned he's in the top five in the world in our opinions um, last week. Um, and for me, he's got a, a fairly favourable draw here. Um, we, we know he likes, well, he's fairly comfortable on, on tops and 16s. It's got to be said, much like Joe Cullen. Um, so he, he's got the options, um, haven't got a whole lot of experience in the World Grand Prix. Unfortunately, but the, the same as Gab- the case, same can be said for for Gabriel Clemens. And for me, the the scoring power um, and the recent form of, of Nathan Aspinall gets him over the line fairly comfortably with a two 0 win. I'm going back to agreeing on you on this one. Um, for me, for me, there's only one winner. I, I think I think Aspinall is. He's been he's been unlucky at times as well as of late. Um, at the the European tour event, which I keep going back to, uh, he, he, ended, he ended up losing to, to I believe, Dave Chisnell. 
who, who ended up brilliantly. Uh, Clemens was in the same tournament and ended up losing to Daryl Gurney and was quite out of sorts. Um, even with his home crowd in front of him, he's not really. He showed dribs and drabs at the Auckland series, but for a player who regularly makes quarterfinals and semi finals, of course, he's not got over that final hurdle yet, which is a bit of a surprise uh, still. Um, he, he was only making like one one or two during that autumn series and was and was not showing his best game by any means. He's on his debut as well, as much as that isn't in front of the Dublin crowd. Uh, so he could play into his hands, especially over, over the shorter format. Um, it's one of those games which we could see a shock in, but for me, Aspinall, Aspinall edge of it. Uh, it depends on how lucky he is in this game, to be honest. Uh, whether or not he gets, he, end up, he ends up getting pipped 2 1, maybe. But if that doesn't happen for me, yeah, 2 0, 2 0 all day. His scoring power when he gets off a double as well. Uh, when he gets going, he's, he's one of the best in the world. And yeah, I, I only really see one winner as such. Yeah, 2 0 for me on that one. Okay, we move into the final game of the first round. It's Jamie Hughes against Stephen Bunting. Um, looking at the odds earlier, the bookies can't split them and neither can I. I haven't actually made my decision as to who I'm going to pick yet, but I will reel that in the next five seconds. Uh, I'm actually going to be picking Stephen Bunting for this one. Um, it's a, a very, very tough tie to call. Um, no player comes in with, with fantastic form. No player comes in with previous at, at the World Grand Prix. So Jamie Hughes was extremely unlucky against Marco Van Gerwen, though last year, last year it has to be said. Um, it's Both of them have got scoring power when they get going. Both of them are decent on the double when they get going. Probably Jamie Hughes, you've got to say, in terms of doubling edges, it's slightly. Um, when he's when he's on form on top, so he, is, he is absolutely superb there. But um, for no other reason than... I've told myself I've got to make a prediction. Uh, I'm going to go with Stephen Bunting. Um, there's very little reasoning to this one. It's such a, such a tough game to call um, with the, the recent form between the two. And I'm going to go uh, in a game that probably goes all the way to a final leg, uh, Stephen Bunting. Yeah, um, in terms of this game, uh, for me, it's a weird one to call, I say. Um, Bunting has, Bunting has changed his darts as of late. Um, he's gone to he's gone to a new new target dart, um, which which over the years, of course, he's used that he's used that bullet, uh, which is quite well known. Um, and he showed really good form during the autumn series using using these new darts. He's used a bit of a weird one. He hasn't really shown it on the big stage yet. Uh, a bit like a bit like Christoph Ratajski for me. Um, in, in that in that aspect, as much as Ratajski has done more, uh, Hughes has been Hughes has been quality since he's come over to the BDC. But he just needs that run, uh, and especially in a section of the draw where he, he, he could he could have it he could have it quite easy if he can get through this. Um, Byron, of course, Gerwin Price being in the same half. Um, I'm going to go different uh, to to one to Hughes. But like you say, it will be quite a dog fight for me. Um, with yeah, with yeah, with yeah, with the tips of man coming out on top in the end. Um, on on a more personal note, um, for me, he's got one of the best throws in the PDC. Uh, he long has for me, um, and if and if he can get going, yeah, he's especially on double top, like you say, and and, and on the treble twenty, he, he he'll win for sure. But again, a bit like Bunting, it's why it's such a pick and game because he's both players. Uh, they end up having that A game, but they don't have anything to fall back on for me when they go past that A game. Um, so, so it could be a game which is one of the more lower averages or potentially one of the more higher averages for me. But yeah, I'm going 2 1 Hughes on that game. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you one very quick question before we end. Um, and I think you know what it's going to be. Um, yeah. Just give us a, a very, very quick visit prediction for. Your winner of the 2020 World Grand Prix, Sam. A bit of a weird one. Um, this one, of course. I think price for sure. Price all right for me. Uh, I don't think Van Gerwen will um, would do anything in this tournament. I don't think he returned to form. I think I think it's a horrific draw for him, which is quite a surprise considering previous draws where he's he's kind of been able to get away with it uh, at times in previous tournaments where he's. 
it's, it's, it's nothing to do with Van Gerwen. Um, it's just how the draw falls. But um, in terms of Christopher Tyski, he's got a, got a horrendous draw. And even past that, Devin Peterson, who was winning against him. Um, but for me, if you get through those two games, I see Van Gerwen winning it. Because then he has Wade, Wade or King, potentially. But, um, yeah, for me, Price has the best half of the draw. Uh, him and Wright do. Um, and yeah, and so for me, I think I think Gerwin Price wins and adds another major title to his to his resume again ahead of the uh, Grand 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 Slam, where he looked to make it three in a row in the same venue once again. Yeah, um, as it's been a theme of this video, I'm going to have to agree with you, um, Michael Van Gogh, and if he gets through those opening two tough ties against Ratajski um, and then D'Souza or Peterson, you'd likely say Peterson, um, then. Obviously, that he's an absolutely huge danger, and he does rightly go into the tournament as the favourite. But going price is a five to one. It's got to be, it's got to be said a five to one shot going price for me. Um, he, he's the form player going in, the best player in the world, and the draw that he's got make him a, a huge danger in this tournament. So I'm going to agree with you once again, Sam. Um, going price, the winner of the 2020 World Grand Prix. We hope. Um, we will see you very soon uh, on Tungsten Terror. We'll be back next week to have a little review of the World Grand Prix. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you soon.